Hi, this is Laura and Travia. And next we have the positive or positive division, sometimes also referred to as the choir division. This would be the lowest manual keyboard on the physical instrument, but it's also the softest and highest in terms of timbres and colors. It's generally intended to accompany a choir without overpowering the voices, to accompany solo instruments on other stops, and for ethereal meditative instrumentals. Its greatest strength is in its subtlety. In Fredonia, we have a light flute chorus on our positive. We have the eight foot gedeckt, four foot roar flute. We leap up to the one foot zee flute. And occasionally we might want to incorporate the uh, one and one third foot larigot mutation stop. You can hear the tuning is similar to that of the Nizard. We also have an uncommon high uh, principal two foot stop, which seems out of place on the positive, but it is bright enough that it could blend in with the flute chorus without uh, overpowering it, but sort of brightening up the sound. Gives it a little bit more height and volume. The sharp is a mixture stop. Let's talk about mixtures, which all have Roman numerals instead of numbers and there are a few on each of the divisions. Unlike normal stops, mixtures access more than one rank. So a mixture stops Roman numeral refers to the number of ranks it engages, ranks being collections of timbres, rather than the length of its pipe. So it's referring to the number of ranks that it can connect to. So the sharf uh, four in this case is using four individual ranks for this one unique note. And you can kind of hear it in the harmonic series. Uh, the mixture four on the swell is accessing four ranks. The mixture five on the grate is accessing five ranks. And we also have a mixture three on the pedal as well. They're all quite similar in terms of their sound, but they do have some subtle differences. Like the mutation stops, like the Nizard and the Tierce and the Larica, these mixture stops are hardly ever used on their own. They're often used to color a thicker timbre because they are quite abrasive. You can hear the difference the sharp makes to brighten up that sound and give it a really, really bright ping to it, basically. We also have the crumb horn on the positive, which is a solo reed stop on the soft side. Now you'll notice that the positive doesn't have any 16 foot stops at all, except for the couplers, which incidentally work exactly the same way as they do on the swell. So lots and lots and lots of colors available there. Now you may have already noticed that this division also has a stop for the trompeta real. This is the exact same set of pipes. This is not a separate set of trompeta pipes. Now why would that be? The reason is that the trompeta real is so loud. You would need a very rich and loud sound to accompany it if you ever wanted to use this as a solo read stop with um, supporting musical material underneath. But the only division capable of producing a large enough sound to support the trompeta real is the grate. And if you were to access the trompeta real on the grate and wanted to accompany it as well, all of these stops would be sounding at once. So the trompeta real wouldn't truly be a solo there. It would be present in the accompaniment as well, so it wouldn't really have its own identity. So having the trompeta real accessed by the positive means that you have now freed up the great division to be available to provide accompaniment with the principal chorus, which would be loud enough to support that instrument, as we'll see in an example coming up. Lastly, on the positive, we have the tremolo stop. Italian for trembling, the tremolo adds vibrato to the ranks attached to the positive division. So no matter what you select, it's going to tremble.
can have an interesting effect. That starts to sound a little bit more like a string than a horn, which can be nice depending on the music. Also affects the couplers. The only thing it will not affect is the trompeta real. Because this is an exception to the rule. It is not truly attached to the positive division in the same way that it's attached to the great, totally different set of pipes and ranks, so the tremolo is not going to affect that one. The tremolo is not always a desirable effect, because it can start to sound a little bit like a baseball organ if you're not careful. But it does generally sound nice on the flute and string choruses. It can add a little bit of sparkle and dynamism to an otherwise sedated division. This again, it's a very subtle sound that you're looking for here in general. So to recap, here are some typical registrations on the positive division. We have this lovely light flute chorus. You can employ the tremolo or not. We also have this soft crumb horn solo reed stop. So in this example, I'm really starting to make the most use of my divisions. I want to have the counter melody playing on a separate line from the crumb horn because I would like that to be a solo line. So that's been separated onto the positive division here. I'm going to use a soft flute stop on the swell for the inner line. And I'm going to jump the gun here a little bit and incorporate the pedal as well. So not the best combination of stops, it's a little bit plotty, but you get the idea. We would want to separate out all of these different lines so that I have control over each of them individually. And lastly, we have the trompeta real which we can access on this division. I have the positive playing the solo line again. I am going to incorporate the pedal and I'm going to support my trompeta real with some stops on the grate. <laughs> So we have that nice, thick accompaniment, loud and impressive enough to support the trompeta real without sounding wimpy or unbalanced. Lastly, we have the pedal division. Again, normally you would be playing this keyboard with your feet as it contains the lowest pipes, including the 16 foot pipes and on many organs, the 32 foot pipes. It is basically never polyphonic as it's intended for bass lines. It can be used for tenor melodies but it's generally used to support the manuals. The reason for separating the 16 foot pipes and the lower pipes onto its own pedal system is similar to the reason why we have the trompeta real on the positive as well as the great division. When you activate a 16 foot pipe on a manual, it will sound on every key. Low pitches, you can really hear it there. Low pitches in close proximity do not always sound great in performance. It can get really muddy and really difficult to distinguish the inner notes of a chord. So ideally, you would want those 16 foot lower pipes, the, the lowest line of your hymn or your chorale or whatever you're performing, to be operating independently so that it's not sounding on every key. That way, you can get lots of interesting closed chords. Now you can really hear what's happening on the inside of the chord. It's more difficult when you're activating a 16-foot pipe for every key. So that's why the pedal activates the way it does. It's meant to be that lowest line operating independently of what's going on in the upper lines of your music. So extrapolating on what we've learned so far, we have different sets of pedals that go well together. We have the 16 foot principal and eight foot octave. Those are part of the principal chorus. Oh, still on the grate. There we go. The choral bass pairs well with that as well. We also have some flutier stops, we have the sub bass. 
and the two foot nocturne goes well with that as well. So that has its own mini flute chorus in addition to its mini principal chorus. We also have the 32 foot untersatz. This is quite low. It is the plottiest of the plods. It's the lowest flute on the instrument, and it's so incredibly soft that it doesn't really operate well on its own, but better as a coloristic function for some other stops. You can hear how that just sort, sort of adds some weight rather than adding a, a huge amount of volume. It's more of an effect. We also have the mixture three rank that I mentioned before. Adds a little bit of interesting color. That would help the bass line cut if you wanted it to pop out a little bit more in a texture. And then we also have our solo stops on the pedal. There's actually quite a few options here. We have the uh, 16 foot pozon, which is a trombone stop. 16 foot bassoon. Slightly less aggressive, but still quite loud. We have our 8-foot trumpet again. And we have the infamous 32-foot contrafagot, which is a contrabassoon. So again, we are rarely using these solo reed stops on the pedal to play some kind of a solo line but they can really go a long way to coloring the other choruses that you have available. For example, the bassoon colors the principal chorus relatively well, gives it more of a bite, more of an attack. The pizone would go uh, even farther in that direction, a trumpet as well. So this might be good for accompanying solo reed stops and other parts of the instrument that are maybe being used for fanfare material. This would be appropriate for that. The 32-foot contrafagot, it is really specific to the situation that you're looking for. This would be for, I think, probably a special effect or for the grand finale of a hymn. It is so heavy, I cannot imagine it being used uh, for very long without it becoming uh, exhausting to listen to. Last, we have the 4-foot chalmé, which is also a brass stop, but quite a bit less aggressive. So this could mix well with the principal chorus as well. So to take a look at some typical registrations, let's go back to some of the first examples we looked at. Again, the pedal is best used when supporting what's happening in the manuals. Looking at our first example, which was a hymn chorale that we had used with the uh, principal chorus. Let's listen to it again without the pedal. It's impressive, but what happens if we add a little low end? That chord right there is actually a great example. If we had the 16 foot activated on the grate, that inner line there would be destroyed. Da -da, that suspension. So that's where the pedal really uh, functions well, is to add a huge amount of weight to the low end of these uh, rich hymn chorales. Um, going back to one of our flute examples, we could support this similarly with the flute chorus on the pedal. Let's listen to it without first. Let's add it in. Again, way more weighty, way more impressive and majestic with the low end added in. And this is true for when you have all of the stops activated, uh, especially on the Great Division. Let's see what we've got going on here with this principal chorus but I'm also going to give it a little bit of brightness to have it pop out of the texture a little bit more. It may have been difficult to hear the subtle differences of adding in these higher stops on the pedal, but it does brighten up the pedal a little bit and make it easier to cut in terms of frequency. We can also use the pedal to support any of the divisions, including the swell. So in this example, we were using the strings. So let's see if we can find a good combination with the pedal here. Let's try adding 
This is on the soft side, so let's try adding some flutes. Thickens up the sound nicely. So you can really see the benefit of having the pedal as we looked at in these other later examples as well with the solo reed and the trompeta real. The pedal is a great support mechanism for lots of activity on the other divisions. When it operates independently, that's when it is its most useful. That concludes our look at all the divisions of Fredonia Grand Organ. I'll stop here, and in the final part of this video trilogy, we'll talk about the decision-making process of picking stops and real-world use cases. This has been Laura and Travia. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.